apart and play basketball. Meet Jackson and Jet Williams, just 6 and 11 years old, but their skill on the basketball court are well beyond their years. The brothers make it look easy, but the moves only came with lots and lots of practice. A lot of work. Some of my friends, they just go around, hang out. Sometimes we get tired, we get a drink, but then we keep doing it, then we get drinks, and then we keep doing it, getting drinks. They weren't always hot shots, in fact, quite the opposite. That's why Dad stepped in. Put them in Kids Inc. They wanted, they wanted to play basketball, um, so we put them in, and after a few games, you know, halfway through the season pretty much, we realized that they were lacking badly, you know, in, in fundamentals, so it was a little embarrassing, actually. Brad, a tennis pro, applied what he knows about coaching that sport and took the same approach with his kids. We went straight away, we worked on how a pro would handle the ball, not how a beginner would handle the ball, how would a pro handle the ball, and that's where I started them off. And they failed miserably at the start, but we kept working and kept going every day, and as you can see from the video now, you've seen the results, they had improved, you know, 15, 20 times what they were. The videos, posted on YouTube, got thousands of hits. They're the results of nine months of work. But today, five more months later, Jackson and Jet are even better. Do you think that you're good? Yeah, but not really good. This is a little bit good. And no offense to the guys at the big game today, but Jet says that basketball is much more of a challenge. The ball, you, you, have, you have to play defense or offense. In basketball, you have to, be able to shoot, dribble, defense, pass. In Amarillo, Jordan Lucero, KMR, NBC4 News. Scoop by scoop, crews remove dirt. They're digging out a channel in the now dry Canadian River. This is the, the old channel here where we are, and as you can see, it's, it's pretty much nothing at this point. The hope is that once the channel is reestablished, rainwater can flow through it and replenish Lake Meredith. Cremois has been at it for about a month now. Crews work 12-hour days, seven days a week. The long hours are turning into big progress. Satterwhite says the channel already stretches for about four miles. This is just such a good opportunity. Let's go ahead and do it. The dry weather has made it easy and more cost-effective for the dig, but it also means that it'll take a good amount of rain for the project to produce results. As you can see where they're digging here, they're about, about four feet deep, and it's just completely dry at that level. So you know, all these rains are going to have to completely resaturate the sand before it'll flow onto the river. At the Canadian River, Jordan Lucero, KMR, NBC4 News. First, a concourse upgrade. Now, a security upgrade at Rick Husband Airport. The advanced imaging technology scanner is in Amarillo. It addresses the privacy concerns without compromising security. The scanner eliminates the need for a full body pat down by using electromagnetic waves to find objects underneath clothing. I think it's uh, a lot more friendly as far as the travelers are concerned than, than the original ones and, and the ones that were being used a year or so ago. That's because new software now shows a generic human body outline instead of your actual physique. You walk into the tube-like scanner and raise your arms. The scanner then uses electromagnetic waves to look for weapons, explosives, and other potential threats underneath your clothing. If nothing shows up, you're good. This is my first time going through it. Yeah, I mean, just like walking through the metal detector. I mean, just stand there for a couple seconds and you're good to go. If it does show something, you'll then be patted down by a TSA agent, but only of the Thank same gender and only on that part of the body where the object showed up. Passenger gets to see exactly what the TSO sees, so there's no surprise. The only way you'll get a full body pat down is if the partial pat down doesn't turn up Thank something. Thank you, sir. You have a great day. Officials say the machine's radiation is safe. It's about a thousand times less than what is emitted from a cell phone. I don't really have a problem with it. Um, anything to you know, keep secure in the air, I mean, I'm, I'm okay with it. It's just one is once a year where um, our whole Vietnamese community comes together and uh, this is an opportunity for us to get together and celebrate our new year. It's like really good for us and it's like helped to know more about our community. I'm, I'm gonna dance the Vietnamese traditional dance. It's like our new year so it's like our Vietnamese ladies traditionals how they do it back in the days. Um, 
actually an optometrist, and so I'm hoping to build my uh, practice and my career this year. And I try also to help the Vietnamese community as well as um, the American community because I grew up here, and that's my resolution. I hope to do my best as an optometrist. I'm very grateful and I'm really happy to see the whole community to actually come here and um, join us in our celebration because it is really freezing outside and um, it's a great turnout. Every person at the Salvation Army's Thanksgiving dinner has a story and Glenna Pickett's is just one of hundreds. Homeless for 14 months, she's been staying at the shelter and looking for work. Hard, lots of dire need. Larry Atwood's been here since August, working to get back on his feet after a DUI, license suspension, and a falling out with his family. It's kind of mixed feelings for me because, uh, you know, I'm, I'm away from my family. But at the same time, I've got a new family here. Major Tim Greider says the shelter's seen about the same number of people as years past. What's changed is who they're seeing. More families, more teens, and a lot of people drawn by Amarillo's low unemployment rate. While we're used to maybe 5 to 10 percent not being from our area, uh, this past year it was, it was well over half. Today, volunteers cooked nearly 400 pounds of food, and it all starts with Leroy Anderson. Man, I started I started this like four weeks ago. One thing just led after another, and I just kept on rolling. I didn't want to stop. Anderson started working in the kitchen seven years ago, after he actually stayed in the shelter himself. The kitchen gives him the chance to combine his two greatest passions, cooking and helping other people, even if it means spending most of Thanksgiving away from his wife and five-month-old daughter. Man, it's a blessing. They had me out there almost where they had me crying because of what they were saying, how much they appreciated. That's where I receive my blessing. When, when, when they when they happy, I'm happy. Will you enjoy your meal? The chance to be part of something greater than herself is what drew Kathleen Houston to volunteer for the first time. My father passed away in February, so my mom decided she wanted to do this. And I said, great, let's go. And I can't express the joy that I'm feeling inside right now. That meal gives a chance to stop, be grateful for what you have, and find the common ground with the person next to you. So when you see us out on the streets, you know, don't think of us as uh, a have not or a has been. We are somebody that we'll have. You know, we will strive to overcome. We're going to get back on our feet. You know, it just uh, takes time. A plane full of veterans from different wars got sent off in style. It's the honor flight. More than 50 veterans and volunteers will spend the next three days trekking around Washington, D.C. It'd be wonderful. For Bill and his wife of 56 years, Joanne, it's making up for lost time. They had only dated a month before he was deployed to Korea. And then he was gone a year, and then he came back, and he was stationed in Louisiana. So it was still more letters most of the time. A few times we had to go back. And then he got out of the service the end of November. And so then we had from then until January 23rd that we dated. We got married January 23rd. They'll explore monuments and memorials recognizing their service together, including the Tomb of the Unknowns, which is something that never fails to impress. Uh, the changing of the guard at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier is what a highlight for these guys. The veterans will meet up with Congressman Mac Thornberry and Senator John Cornyn for a guided tour of the House of Representatives and a dinner, which for many is the first time they'll have been welcomed into the chambers where the decision was made to send them into war. In Amarillo, Jackie Kingston, KCIT Fox 14 News at 9. Part the basketball.
meet Jackson and Jet Williams, just 6 and 11 years old, but their skill on the basketball court are well beyond their years. The brothers make it look easy. the basketball. Meet Jackson and Jet Williams, just 6 and 11 years old, but their skill on the basketball court are well beyond their years. The brothers make it look easy. We can shoot, we can dribble. You gotta have heart with the basketball. Meet Jackson and Jet Williams, just 6 and 11 years old, but their skill on the basketball court are well beyond their years. The brothers make it look easy. 